Bon retour sur le plateau de Cameroun des Lettres. Après le tour des régions, place à la suite de votre matinale d'information. Dans quelques instants seulement, nous aurons tabloïd avec Gaëlle Obono. Elle est là pour la version en français. Juste après, vous aurez le rappel des titres de l'actualité. Mais d'abord, quand prévu les journaux pour vous ce mardi 5 janvier 2021 Gaëlle, bonjour. Bonjour Gladys. Bonjour. Bienvenue, bien réveillée. Tout à fait. Alors dites-nous, qu'est-ce qui fait la vitrine dans les kiosques aujourd'hui Eh bien, on parle des vœux au Palais de l'Unité, les cérémonies annulées. On parle également euh, du Chan qui débute dans quelques jours au Cameroun. C'est tout de suite euh, dans votre revue de presse. Bienvenue à Tabloïd, l'édition de ce mardi. Et nous ouvrons avec cette actualité. Il y a un vœu au palais de l'unité. C'est à la une de Cameroun Tribune. Les cérémonies annulées, titre de journal, à travers deux communiqués signés hier. Le ministre et directeur du cabinet civil, Samuel Vondo. Ayolo fait savoir que les cérémonies solennelles de présentation des vœux au président de la République et à la première dame n'auront pas lieu cette année en respect des mesures de protection contre le Covid-19. Nous restons à la une de Cameroun Tribune et nous parlons exécution du budget 2021. Le top départ s'exclame Cameroun Tribune. En attendant le lancement technique prévu la semaine prochaine, certaines administrations collectent depuis le 1er janvier les recettes prévues dans la loi des finances. Par ailleurs, la circulaire du ministre des Finances précisant les actes prioritaires d'exécution, le journal, des projets publiés par le ministère de l'économie, entre autres, sont disponibles dans l'édition de Cameroun Tribune de ce jour. Nous restons à la une de Cameroun Tribune pour parler enlèvement d'enfants. Un suspect interpellé à Yaoundé, le nommé Yannick Olinga, 33 ans, a été appréhendé le 28 décembre par les éléments du commissariat du 3e arrondissement après une tentative manquée de son complice. C'était donc au quartier Anguissa à Yaoundé. À la une du quotidien, à présent, un Consamba troisième projette SAMU, titre le journal, selon le quotidien, sous l'impulsion de son maire, Madame Eidi Yvonne, la commune d'arrondissement de Consamba troisième est résolument engagée à changer la physionomie, et ceci grâce aux réalisations inscrites dans son projet de développement. Selon le journal quotidien, c'est ainsi que le 30 décembre 2020, à la faveur de la première session du conseil municipal New Look consacré à l'examen et à l'adoption du budget pour l'exercice 2021 de cette commune, les conseillers municipaux, en adoptant son budget à la somme de 662 97 627 francs, ont mis un accent particulier sur les projets et qui promeuvent notamment la santé, l'éducation et l'agriculture dans cet arrondissement. À la une du journal, l'équation à présent à faire Denis Koul, France, Christiane euh, Memingwe, l'ex-présidente, brise le silence, s'exclame. Le journal Équation, les 10 millions prétendument volés correspondent aux deux chèques de banque qui ont été remis aux deux entités exclues des Nicoul. C'est ce que dit le journal L'Équation de ce jour. Autre actualité à présent à la une du journal Vision économique, à la une du journal de Sa Majesté, Parfum. Euh, et Wodok Nkwang, à la une de vision économique, ce jour on peut retrouver offre hôtelière du Chan et de la Cannes. À peine 20 hôtels correspondent et répondent aux normes de la CAF, titre vision économique. Selon le journal, le Cameroun compte 1921 établissements hôteliers et sites touristiques. Et malgré ce nombre impressionnant, à peine 20 hôtels répondent 
aux normes de la CAF qui vont accueillir les équipes qualifiées pour le CHAN 2021 et la CAN 2022. Alors, une vision économique que l'on retrouve également. Les trois axes majeurs du message du président de la République, mais aussi une information en téléphonie mobile. Le régulateur et les opérateurs s'accordent sur le respect des règles régissant l'activité au Cameroun. C'était dans la une de Vision économique, l'édition de ce jour. Le journal développement local et qui s'intéresse au développement dans les localités camerounaises. Aujourd'hui, titre au sujet de la commune d'arrondissement de Yaoundé, troisième mise en service imminente des ouvrages réalisés par le bulldozer de Nkolegué. Selon le journal développement local, transformé en un vaste chantier, Luc Corona, depuis son arrivée à la tête de cette municipalité du département du Mfundi, région du centre, ne ménage aucun effort pour assurer le développement de son territoire de compétences, déterminé à transformer le visage de sa commune. Selon le journal de développement local, le magistrat municipal pose des actions remarquables qui impactent positivement la vie des populations. C'était donc les informations que l'on peut retrouver à la une du journal Développement local, l'édition de ce jour. Prochain journal, les derniers journal, le panel hebdo de ce mardi. L'on parle précisément des Liban Koudou Ngoulou. En 2020, l'ODS a gagné en maturité, notoriété, efficacité et représentativité selon l'autorité. Dans une interview accordée aux confrères de la presse locale, le coordonnateur général de l'Observatoire du développement sociétal dresse un bilan satisfaisant de l'année qui vient de s'achever. Voilà, c'est la une de Panels Hebdo qui nous donne l'occasion de mettre un terme à cette édition de Tabloïd. N'oubliez pas de vous rendre à vos kiosques pour, à kiosques pour acquérir vos journaux au prix de 400 francs CFA. Le train de l'année scolaire 2020-2021 à nouveau sur les rails après une escale de deux semaines. Élèves et enseignants ont regagné les bancs hier lundi. Trois mois décisifs au cours desquels il faudra redoubler d'efforts pour que la fin d'année scolaire soit colorée de succès. La rentrée académique a également été effective hier lundi sur l'ensemble du territoire national. Après la trêve de Noël, les coups ont repris avec de nouveaux objectifs pour la nouvelle année entamée. Assiduité et ponctualité intègrent les résolutions des universités ainsi que le respect des mesures barrières. Revisiter toutes les questions sur la protection de l'enfance au Cameroun sont les défis auxquels feront face le staff administratif du ministère des Affaires sociales. Après la célébration des fêtes de fin d'année, les paraffeurs ont été soumis à l'examen pour consultation des dossiers restants en suspens en 2020. Au ministère de la Promotion de la Femme et de la Famille, trois programmes seront élaborés au cours de cette nouvelle année. Il s'agit de la promotion de la protection des droits de la famille et de l'enfant, la protection des droits de la femme, la gouvernance et l'appui institutionnel. Programmes qui vont permettre de réaliser les missions du ministère de la Promotion de la Femme et de la Famille en 2021.
souhaite à vous et puis une bénédiction pour 2021. Happy New Year to you all and uh, we are glad to know that you chose this morning, you chose uh, CRTV and CRTV News to kickstart your day. Though in a few minutes now we'll have, we'll, we'll be having our economic page with Beastries Goom just uh, to give you, uh, to read this uh, little communique. Le Collège did decree, this decree by uh, the President of the Republic. Le Collège des électeurs de la circonscription électorale de la Ménois est convoqué le dimanche 4 avril 2021 à l'effet de procéder à l'élection des représentants du commandement traditionnel du département de la Ménois au Conseil régional de l'Ouest. Les bureaux de vote seront ouverts à 8 h et fermés à 18 h. C'est donc un décret du président de la République qui reconvoque les chefs traditionnels de la Ménois aux urnes pour le compte des régionales 2020. Paul Bia fixe donc au 4 avril la date, la tenue de ce scrutin-là qui va permettre de désigner le représentant du commandement traditionnel du département de la Minois au Conseil régional de l'Ouest. Petite mise en contexte, on se souvient que lors du scrutin du 6 décembre, les trois chefs traditionnels de la Minois n'avaient pas pris part à l'élection en raison d'irrégularités constatées dans leur liste par ELECA, mais confirmées plus tard par la Chambre administrative de la Cour suprême. Donc le motif avancé était le non-respect de la composante sociologique et de ce fait, les chefs traditionnels de la Minois étaient privés de siège au Conseil régional de l'Ouest et avaient donc saisi le président de la République qui a donc écouté leur doléance en publiant ce décret-là qui fixe qui reprogramme le scrutin, la désignation du représentant du commandement traditionnel du département de la Ménois au 4 avril 2021. Et si à présent on accueillait Beatrice Ngoum pour notre page éco, ce sera juste après ce jingle. She's here. Beatrice Goum is uh, on the set for our economic page of the day. Good morning, Beatrice. Good morning, Gladys. I like your pink. Thank you. It's the sign that you I are... like your purple, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice. So uh, uh, you, uh, you are coming with fresh news in economy and, uh, and um, uh, some uh, you start with uh, that presidential speech. Yes, exactly, Clarice. To talk about the press, we are going to talk about the presidential speech again yeah. talking about the growth rate that was mentioned in that speech by the head of state who was talking of Cameroon's economy attaining 8% yeah. growth in 2021. You know that for, for, for some time now we've been talking of 4% 4.1 percent, but it's always been, it has always been between 4 and 4.1 percent growth rates for Cameroon. But now there are projections that in 2021 we could reach 8 percent of a growth rate. And one of the priorities of the state from 2021 will be to lay the foundation for the development of projects that are aimed at enabling that uh, Cameroon gets to that 8 yeah. percent growth rate. And this will be done with a number of uh, sectors. In, and on, in focus, like the agricultural sector, the wood sector, the transformation sector, because we are talking about uh, substitution, yeah, import in, substitution. In, import substitution. So you see that there are a lot of sectors that government has to invest in to ensure that we get to that 8% growth rate in 2021. And Clarissa Ray Takang, in the following report, will yes. be coming back to some of those sectors that Cameroon is really banking on to attend the 8% growth rate. Space. That is, however, the experts' view about the promise of sustainable wealth, which agribusiness, processing, textiles, and even mining hold. Their contribution to enable the country inch towards an 8% growth target should be grounded on investments in the broadest sense. Make an emphasis on the agro-industry. The second sector should be the one of forest and wood industry. 
and the third sector should be one of the cotton and textile. While all necessary conditions for foreign merchandise to gradually give way to homemade goods are yet to be guaranteed, appropriate machinery, well-equipped processing plants, and the steady supply of raw materials to budding and established enterprises are crucial. We should expect more value added once those products are locally transformed and then exported. Not add crude product, but add transformed uh, uh, product. We should expect that the government and the public sector should be the first kind to acquire the product locally made. Working this out will require putting the money where it is needed, using the right people and technology to get the job done, while paying attention to details such as standards and ensuring that there is more than enough to satisfy consumer demands and state coffers. We're glad it's just to mention that it's beginning from 2021 to 2030. It's 10 years. Yes, plan. for the SND 30. SND 30. Okay. Uh, and I know in order to meet, to reach that 8% growth rate, uh, the government, the president of the, of the Republic, uh, put a focus on infrastructure. Yes, well, we, with priority on short-term projects. Yes. What, what, what does he mean by that? He means by conducting periodic controls that going down to those uh, different sites where uh, we have some infrastructural work that is going to be carried out to make sure that those people, who, maybe if they give you a contract, you, they, they go down, they have, there are teams that come down to the field to ensure that that contract is executed within well, the period mm -hmm. that you were uh, given. So he, the, to, to get to that growth, we are going to be banking on infrastructural development. Yes. And to develop this infrastructure, we, we must make sure that those who come to get the project or would table for bits, when they table for the bids and they get the project, they ensure that the bids are, uh, they, they ensure that the projects are executed and on time. But government cannot just be lukewarm about it. Government has to send teams to go and control those projects and make sure that the projects are well executed and executed within the times, uh, the, the time frame Friend, that yes. was given for those projects. Maybe they say 10 years, there has to be a control team that visits those projects to make sure that those projects are executed within that period and mm -hmm. that the, the quality of the project are good. And to get those results coming, experts are advising on us to, uh, on government to do some kind of cost of structural project, such as the Mengvele Hydroelectricity Dam and the Simalen Motorway. All these are major infrastructural projects in Cameroon that we uh, the, the government has already launched, we, yes. which are ongoing, but government has to also make sure that these projects are executed and executed on time. Okay. And Luma Slim Davis will be popping into some of those projects that government has to really make sure that those who table for the bids and get the project execute them within the period given them. Okay. The President of the Republic prescribed an 8% economic growth. We can invest and try to capture the maximum of resource that will create uh, value added to our own economy. There's a need to create value, to give another value to our products by starting transforming some of them. Either you boost the, the consumption, that will relaunch by demand, or you boost the investment, you boost the uh, industrialization, and uh, you end up in a structural change of the economy in order to have uh, an economic growth, that's a 2% growth, expected in 2021 to the 8%. Another worry to bring solutions to is the high cost of structural projects, which is a drawback to economic progress. If there is a delay that is caused by the Cameroonian session, the cost of those delays should be bear by the Cameroonian session. Concerning the execution of the structural projects, at the prescribed cost, uh, it's just about fighting against corruptions in, uh, and uh, streamlining the um, process of awarding contracts. However, with Cameroon's economic potentials, the target of 8% growth is within reach.
exactly, Gladys. It is within reach, but we have to all work to make sure that we get there. Because if you take a project and you don't execute, who, carry, who bears the... The, the, the bronze is the government. Always the state. Yes. <laughs> so those are projects that can really enhance the, 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 the growth of development yes. if uh, they are really executed on time. And uh, one of, uh, you, you talked about contribution of everybody. Yes. Everyone has to, to contribute to that, uh, to that plan, to that vision 20 and uh, 35. And uh, one of the major actors is uh, the private sector. sector. Yes, uh, to talk about the private sector, they have, they to have their own role to play. You remember during the COVID period, it's not like we are out of the COVID period. At the beginning of the COVID period, okay. JICAM, the, 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 the Enterprise Guild, came up with a number of uh, uh, suggestions to government yeah. saying that this is what can be done for the private sector that is hard hit by COVID to make sure that the economy remains steady. Yes. But then they had a lot of proposals to make. In that same line, there are still other proposals being made as far as the business climate in Cameroon is concerned. And we've been made to understand that the private sector has a lot to play for the growth of uh, the country because Indeed. the private sector must work with the public mm -hmm. sector. But then, since we have a lot of private enterprises, we have a lot of people who are on their own. And not only small enterprises, but even people who are in the industrial sector, who yes. are private individuals. Even so those who are in the info, informal, in, informal sector, sector, they have to move to the formal one. And, so and they are part of the private sector. Exactly. So to get to that 8.1% growth rate by 2030, experts in Cameroon are pro making a lot uh, some proposals and uh, on the national strategy and development uh, a plan for 2030. They are proposing efforts that can be made to boost the private sector. And they are talking about considering some functional adjustments yes. as far as the private sector is concerned. So Veronica ben Beniela, who yes. is uh, in, in, the, in a littoral bureau, met with uh, some economic experts and this is what she gathered and put together the following report. According to the Cameroon Statistical Yearbook 2017 edition, the private sector provides the largest part of economic growth. This is estimated around 77% of the gross domestic product, excluding the oil sector. However, a projected growth rate of 8.1% on average between 2020 and 2030, according to the SND30, can only be possible if the productions of all companies, private and public, experience additional investments, that is, all things being equal. In terms of government or public administration, the national investment company, SNI, is the tool that can materialize the political will to achieve a growth rate of 8%. The SNI should therefore initiate an innovative strategy that will boost the level of investment in the private and public sectors. A strengthening of credit to the economy could go through other sources of financing parallel to bank credit. The stock exchange is already a suitable place. 8% growth rate by 2030, yes, it is possible. The mechanisms are in place. All Cameroon needs is the dynamism. All Cameroon needs is the dynamism. That is well said, Veronica. And maybe, Beatrice, when uh, we talk about import substitution, we firstly see uh, agriculture and aquaculture. Yes, we also see aquaculture, but is Cameroon importing or exporting much in that sector? No. We import much in, in We import much, but we don't export much. Yes, we Because we to. don't even have. What we produce does not even meet national yes. demand. And you know that there is a plan in the Ministry of Fisheries and, and Animal Husbandry where uh, uh, teams usually go to the field to promote uh, those who are into fish farming yes. through helping them with feed and other equipment so that they can build their fish it ponds. can boost their production. Yeah, it can bo uh, and, 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 uh, and in so doing, it, it's going to scale down on national demand and yes. on importation of fish because we practically consume what we import yes. because we produce very little. So in the littoral region, there, there are some moves to make sure that the pro uh, fish production there is taken to another level. level. Mm -hmm. And a team visited fish production sites to see what they can do to help them, especially as the new finance law has measures that facilitate uh, uh, um, 
that that gives incentives to small ent enterprises so those who are into fish farming they are hopeful that with that they can boost their their production and mercy Ashu yes. is on that beat For many centuries, fish has been an important component of the population's diet in many parts of the world. In the littoral, it promises to be a productive venture in 2021 with the government's new finance law. The decision the government took is really good because it will reduce the price because all the taxes on the food will be removed. This will greatly help all the producers because their burden, what they put in to get the fish will reduce and now they'll be able to get more. So what they will put to be small, why their profit will be much. For these producers, the tax exemptions on fish feed, on incubators and other equipment is an added advantage that will make fish available in the market. Estimated at 280 tons in 2019, experts hold that production will double and incite youths to create new opportunities to fight unemployment. Well, Gladys, we're talking about the finance law that gives incentives. One of such is exoneration of taxes. And yes. you heard in that report the lady saying that because they will no longer pay high taxes because that was one of the problems mm -hmm. that was the, the, the fish farmers were facing, the problem of feed, the problem of taxes on the purchase of equipment. And those were those, some of their, their problems. All those charges makes that uh, uh, lead to the high cost of uh, locally made, made fish, uh, locally, locally produced, pro produced, produced fish. <laughs> so produced fish. with those incentives, they are hopeful that their their production will increase because they'll be able now to buy feed maybe on a cheaper rate yes. to import uh, their equipment that they use in their fish ponds to uh, 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 cheap. Yes, yes, yes. So some um, are, those are some of the, the advantages that the finance law gives them through the incentives that government mm -hmm. has provided for for SMEs. That's a quite good news for us consumers and for... Uh, uh, yes, it's good news for us because you like to pro to consume what is produced in locally. your own country. Yes, that's right. And, and, and you have to keep in mind that pro uh, consuming what is produced locally makes us grow, makes, makes the us country... Grow and then helps your brother or your sister who is into fish farming to progress and to live a better life. And maybe create so jobs. Family. Yes, yeah. create jobs too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beatrice Ngum, for uh, your economic packet this morning. Very rich. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on set. My pleasure too, Gladys. C'était notre page éco de ce mardi. À tout de suite. Et ce communiqué, ce communiqué qui nous vient du cabinet civil à la présidence de la République, qui le ministre et directeur du cabinet civil porte à la connaissance des épouses et des chefs de mission diplomatiques, celles des représentants des organisations internationales basées au Cameroun, des membres des corps constitués nationaux, du cercle des amis du Cameroun, CERAC, des synergies africaines contre le sida et les souffrances de la fondation Chantal Bia, des femmes opérateurs économiques, des responsables d'associations et organisations de femmes que les cérémonies solennelles de présentation des vœux pour l'année 2021 à la première dame, Madame Chantal Bia, épouse du chef de l'État, sont déprogrammées en raison des mesures barrières adoptées par le gouvernement camerounais pour freiner la propagation de la pandémie du nouveau coronavirus. C'est toujours un autre communiqué qui vient, qui est, qui est aussi signé de Samuel Vandoyolo, le ministre directeur du cabinet civil, qui euh, porte également à la connaissance des chefs de mission diplomatique, des représentants des organisations internationales basées au Cameroun, des corps constitués nationaux, opérateurs économiques et responsables d'institutions publiques ou privées, que les cérémonies solennelles de présentation des vœux au chef de l'État, son excellence Paul Biya, pour l'année 2021, sont déprogrammés également en raison des mesures barrières adoptées par le gouvernement camerounais pour freiner la propagation de la pandémie du nouveau Covid-19. C'est peut-être, pas peut-être, certainement dans la presse ce mardi également. If Somoso is here to serve you your daily press review. Good morning, Yves. Good morning, Gladys. How are you? I'm okay, and you? I'm okay. I'm always okay when I see you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, what is uh, the major uh, news in the papers this morning? Yeah, as you rightly said, we we have that story in the newspapers. Uh, 
uh, the communique that uh, cancels uh, the uh, normal handshaking and uh, uh, wishing the head of state happy new year. <laughs> Uh, we have that in the newspapers. The newspapers equally talk about school resumption for the second term yes. uh, that school kick-started yesterday across the National Triangle. Uh, we have that in the papers as well. And then the hemodialysis center in Bamenda is down. All the machines are not working. Most of uh, the English uh, tabloid pick on that story. Those and more on tabloid presented by Yves Tomusu Libaga. It's a beautiful day. I'm glad to have you on tabloid. As we know, uh, we review what the papers are saying in Cameroon, and we begin, as usual, with the low national Balingwa Daily Cameroon Tribune. Cameroon Tribune talks about a uh, report that there will be no ceremony to shake hands and wish the head of state Happy New Year. The event has been cancelled in order to limit the spread of the uh, uh, or due to the coronavirus. This is contained in the press release signed by uh, Samuel Von Duayolo. The paper also uh, takes support of pupils and students who resumed classes yesterday for the decisive second term of the 2020 2021 academic year. The respect of COVID-19 barrier measures is a challenging, it's a challenge worth surmounting by all educational stakeholders. You can read that in uh, today's edition of uh, Cameroon Tribune newspaper. Mutation in its lead story. Mutation says uh, the traditional New Year wishes to the head of state uh, will not take place this year. It says uh, the traditional uh, New Year wishes has been annulled. The paper looks at some of uh, the reasons behind such a yearly event and the impact its annulment may have. The head of state during his traditional end of year address to the nation called on Cameroonians to adopt healthy behaviors in order to limit the spread of the coronavirus. He is therefore preaching by example. The Post newspaper says that kidney patients in Cameroon's uh, northwest region are stranded as all its hemodialysis uh, missions. Uh, the region's lone hemodialysis center are uh, broken. Uh, their frustrations are heightened by actions of uh, the officials who are battling, uh, or battling to uh, out, uh, batting out for each other in declaring the broken health facility open or closed without addressing the issue of broken machines that has left many patients battling for life. The Northwest Regional uh, Delegate of Public Health and the Director of the Bamenda Regional Hospital disagree over the closure of the hemodialysis center. The same story finds voice in the Guardian Post newspaper, uh, which says uh, on Sunday, January 3, the director of the Bamenda Regional Hospital, Dr. Denis Sami, announced uh, a temporary closure of the dialysis center. On the same day, the Northwest Regional Delegate of Public Health, Dr. Kingsley Che, so issued another release uh, contradicting the director of the hospital, stressing the center has not been closed. Rather, the hemodialysis machines, which have been serving patients for more than eight years now, are progressively being replaced by the Minister of Public Health, and the new machines shall go operational in the days ahead, the Regional Delegate of Public Health said. You can get more of that in today's edition of the Guardian Post newspaper. We put an end to tabloids with Reality Plus. Reality Plus applauds the management of COVID-19 uh, in the country by the Minister of Public Health, Manauda Malashi. The paper says within six months, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and the head of state have on separate accounts congratulated frontline workers for a job well done to push back the coronavirus from the country. You can get details in within the columns of uh, Reality Plus. That does it for what the papers are saying in Cameroon. Why not get to the newsstands, buy a newspaper, most of them sell at 400 francs. As you read and encourage the press, you have a beautiful day.